You know what this month is? It's Marchintosh. That's right. Everything Apple computer related, we celebrate it in the month of March. All the way from 68K machines, all the way up to the Intel era. And today, I'm going to focus on my G4 Cube. I really love this machine. I've done some wonderful things to it. And I think it's an excellent balance between form and function. And in my opinion, this is probably one of the best designs Apple came out with in the era. Now this was introduced in July of 2000. So the G4 Cube, really, really neat compact machine. I really enjoy it. And it's a nice bridge machine for the newer Macs. If you want to get older software into an older machine or a newer one, this works pretty good for that. Now this cube, when it came out, like I said, in July of 2000, it's housed in an eight by eight by eight acrylic cube. The Power Mac G4 cube combined the elegance of the iMac with the power of the Power Mac G4. Now, unfortunately, the G4 cube did trade expendability for its small size. There were no PCI slots, and while the graphics card was installed into an AGP slot, there wasn't any room for a full-length AGP card, with the exception of the PCI expansion over the short time that it was sold, the G4 Cube was as versatile as its larger G4 cousin. So the G4 Cube was available with a PowerPC 7400-450 MHz processor, or a PowerPC 7410-500 MHz G4 processor. It was available in different hard drive configurations. A 20, 30, 40, or 60 megabyte was available. It featured a DVD optical drive or a CD-ROM optical drive. Started out with 64 megabytes of RAM, and today you can max it out to 1.5 gigabytes of RAM. It has three RAM slots, an airport card slot, two USB 1.1, two Firewire 400 ports, a 56K modem, 10 100 Ethernet, and to note, Gigabit Ethernet was available as a build to order option. The graphics card was an ATI Rage 128 Pro, Radeon, NVIDIA, or GeForce M2 MX. But sadly, the G4 Cube was not nearly the success that Apple had hoped for. The consensus was that Apple had misjudged the market and production was suspended in 2001. Now, fast forwarding in 2023, there are many upgrades you can do to this guy. And on mine, I will just briefly talk to you of the things that we've done to it. We have added a 12 volt base fan to it. These things really were designed to have a fan installed in them. And in fact, uh, the base where the 40 millimeter fan slides in is there with the screw holes. And you can get aftermarket fans to put in there. And you can run it off the 5 volt or 12 volt. I run mine off the 12 volt. I want to get the maximum cooling on my cube. And we also have what's called an autonomous fan controller. And what this does is it regulates the fan speed. It's a little board that has a temperature probe on it. And you put that up as close as you can to the processor. And when you first power it on, it's on. But what happens is when it hits 89 degrees, it will turn the fan on, and as it gets warmed up, the fan will ramp up. As the processor cools down, it'll slow down. And it definitely keeps us cool. You can go all the way around the sides, and it's nice and cool. Even up here, if you feel up here real carefully, um, you can feel it. It's really cool. You do feel the warm air coming out here. The up other upgrade that I've done was a video card. This is the NVIDIA GeForce 6200. 256 megabyte DDR2 AGP card. It's actually 
a card that was flashed from a PC, and it's the biggest card that I know of that you can put in this in the small form factor. We also have a 120 megabyte SSD in it. Again, makes it a lot more snappy. The operating system that we have on here is Sorbet Leopard. Excellent. If you have a G4 Mac of any sorts, I suggest you do the Sorbet Leopard. It gives you a lot more modern features than the old Leopard does, and it runs a whole heck of a lot quicker too. You can actually get on the internet with this thing. And you can go to YouTube, and you can watch YouTube videos. Granted, the lowest resolution, but you give it time for it to load up, and you can play them pretty good. Now, of course, you can't watch any live streams. Cause I would love to have the gigabit Ethernet option that was built to order in this. And maybe one day I'll find one. Or maybe somebody's really smart, and maybe they can reverse engineer one. If anybody knows where I can get one, please let me know. Or if you have schematics, I could send it to one of my smart YouTube friends. Maybe they can reverse engineer it. I've also put a Apple light in there. So when this is powered up, you get the lit up Apple logo. Pretty cool. The optical drive has been serviced. We took it all apart. We replaced the drive belt on it. It ejects properly and takes the disc in properly as well. I also have the Apple Pro speakers that came with this. Now I got, uh, when I first got it, I didn't have any of those. So I was lucky I found some that were really beat up, but my main thing was the amplifier that was on the harness. So I did recone those, but still wasn't quite what, what I wanted. And I really lucked out. I actually found some new old stock speakers. And so it was just a matter of transplanting the wires. And now I have new speakers for this thing with the grills. A lot of times those little plastic inserts are missing. And of course, the biggest upgrade I've done to this is the newer tech CPU upgrade card. It was first to introduce an internal thermal diode and also dynamic frequency scaling, which allows this to be clocked at a much higher speed and runs it cooler than its predecessor, the 7447. Now the one that replaced this was the 7448, and that's the Apollo 8. It's 2.1 gigahertz, and this is the dual processor card, but there's only one processor on it. Uh, you could, at the time, you could order a dual processor. That would be really awesome. And I know there's something coming out in the pipeline that is going to be a newer version of a dual processor card for the cube. And I'll definitely get a hold of that and I'll be able to do some benchmarks against this one to see how much performance we get out of it when we have a dual processor. But that's that's going to be probably the final upgrade I can do on this machine. But other than that, everything has been upgraded on it and the case is in beautiful shape. There's one thing with that Nortec card and that is it's not powered off of the bus on here. It has its own external power because on this CPU upgrade, although it works on the cube, it doesn't have internal power. Normally this would be powered off the VRM board, but not on this one. So I have a solution. So I got the Stratus high power VRM board. And the problem with that though is, again, if I plug it in to where it goes, it's not gonna power the CPU. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna modify that VRM board. So that way I can take this little extra power supply that heard from 68K map form graciously set up for me. That's where I got that processor from. And uh, it's also, uh, actually Sean from Action Retro, uh, heard fixed him up with the processor. Now Sean's is a little faster than mine because his has a newer chipset. So anyway, what we're going to do is, uh, I, I talked to Herd. Uh, he told me we'll, we'll hook it on the 5 volt side of that card, and we'll modify the plug, we'll plug it in, and that should power the CPU. That way we can get rid of that little extra power supply that's in there. So this is the Stratus VRM version 2 board, 
and it's specifically made for the G4 Cube. Now, it took me a couple years to get my hands on one of these because the gentleman uh, in Japan wasn't selling them for a while, but it finally showed up, and they actually are starting to sell them again because I see them periodically pop up on there. And that's the only place on planet Earth I know that you can get one is from Japan from this particular seller. I'll put a link in the description. But you can see that's the side of it. Now this has 3.3, 5, and 12 volt. And what we're going to do is we'll open the cube up, we'll plug this VRM board, and we're going to do some test voltages and find out where a good place is to tap off the 5 volt. And the reason why we're going to do it on a 5 volt is because that actually is rated for 10 amps. You can see right there, it's very, actually, it's very elegant. This, this actually has got a lot of weight to it. This thing is built like a tank. So I can hardly wait to uh, get the uh, CPU powered off of this like it's intended to, because that's what this is for, is to power the uh, CPU. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this out of the shell here. And the ingenious design of the handle to open this is pretty cool. Push down. There we go. All right, there we go. Okay, push down, pull up, and we'll get out of here. Pull this out. In there. And this is the power supply that powers the CPU. And this is what I want to disconnect, and that way uh, we'll get all the power out of this. It's just kind of hanging in here, right, right there, but that's not a real good solution. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this VRM board out and this will work out very good because that way we can leave this outside because I want to take some voltage measurements on this here. And we have to pull this out. Now, when we put the new one in, we cannot have this in here anymore because that thing is a little bit bigger than this one, that other VRM board. But what I want to do before I power this up is I want to uh, check the voltage that's going to the processor. I'm just going to untape this here. And these big wires go to the processor, so I want to take my Kiwitz meter and measure the voltage. Now what I have to do is I have to power this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this laying here. I'm just going to uh, connect this briefly here. I'm not going to worry about hooking the monitor up to it at the moment. I just want this to be functional so I can uh, check the voltage on this thing. Now also the thing you can do too is on these power supplies, they're unique to the cube, all right? But if you take and put these little feet on them, you can get these anywhere. Uh, you're going to raise it up a little bit off the ground, and that will give you better airflow. These things get extremely hot, just the way they're made. But anything you can do to improve airflow, just a simple little thing like that, 
again, uh, if you want to click my playlist of all the upgrades I've done on this guy, go check it out. But this is simple and elegant looking. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, take this VRM board out and we're going to put the Stratus board in there because I need to do some voltage checks. But when you see it's powered up, it's going to have some nice colored LED lights on it there. So let's take this out. Now I'm trying to remember on this one, we have this one here we got to disconnect. Okay. And then we're going to take this one out and there's a little clip on here we have to move. I'm just going to use my tweezers here to move this here, this little clip here. And that will allow us to pull this out of here without breaking anything. Okay. There we go. So that's the original VRM board. We're just going to put that right there. So here's the Stratos board. And this is a little bit bigger. So let's uh, put this in here. down in there. We'll put the plug on it here. Okay, let's get this on here like so. There we go. All right, so that's down in there. And again, uh, this is a little bit bigger, so you can't put this on there because it would actually be going into the board and cause a, cause a problem there. Okay, so we got this totally disconnected. Uh, we had to take the, took the graphics card out and we put the original connector back in here. So this one here is totally bypassed, so there's no power going to this anymore. So now the CPU is not gonna be getting any power, but it still will run. And what I wanna do is I wanna check the voltages on this plug because if we have five volts at this plug, then that'll make it a lot easier. We'll just matter of putting a plug on here and just plugging it right in there. That'll be awesome. So let's um, get the meter ready here. All right, so um, I did a little probing around on here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, tap the power off of this plug right here. Uh, this gives us a pretty consistent five volts. So it's hot all the time. So we'll use that to run the power supply. So this will be a good choice to uh, run the CPU on that. Now I'd like to find a little connector to put on the back side of that plug. And so I'm gonna look to see if I got some kind of little connector I can hook up. Okay, so we have this uh, totally disconnected now. So now we're going to uh, install this connector here. I uh, cut the extra one off because we're going to be using two pins of it. And we'll uh, continue on this. Okay, so we got our connector uh, hooked on this. Uh, let me get to, let it focus here. And you can see it right here. We put it on there, on the back side of the board. So it goes in like this. So the two pins are on the back side of this plug. And right there. So now what will happen is our wires will plug in right here. These two wires here. As soon as we uh, focus here, there we go. Go. All right, let me. There we go. All right. So 
So these two wires will go right here and uh, we'll uh, hook it up to the harness on the CPU and we'll put it back in there and see if it works. So we got this all soldered up. So now I'm going to uh, put it back into where it needs to be. And then we'll power it up and see how it works. five volt there to run a processor and I'll be able to tell because the autonomous fan controller I'll see it light up here as it gets warmer so just let this run for a minute and then we're going to hook up a monitor to it and see if it works okay Okay, so I'm just going to check the voltage here, make sure that we are getting our voltage out on it. Looks like everything is lit up here. The autonomous fan controller is lit up. And I'm just going to measure it to make sure that we're still getting our 5 volts out of here. Still getting our 5 volts out. Good. And how I know the processor is running is the fan will spin up here as soon as that processor gets warmed up. I will definitely have to put a little better plug on it, but this is just to see if it works. Alright, so let's... Uh, okay, so let's hook up a video monitor and see if we get any video out. All right, so I got a monitor over here. And uh, let's see if we uh, see if the CPU is working on it. It's not getting any video out. All right, that tells me it's not getting enough power. Well, we got it working. We are powered off of the Stratus board. And so what I had to do is I will zoom in here. I will show you is the the five volt just wasn't enough. Um, so I put it on the 12 volt side. I put a different rail on the inside of it there. It's connected, and as you can see, you can see the uh, uh, the graphics uh, processor fan spinning there because this is uh, not passively cooled, it is force cooled because this is, has a much higher graphics card in it. But you can see we are booted up into Sorbet Leopard. Nice, now I don't have a keyboard or mouse hooked to it, but it is working. And momentarily, you're gonna hear that fan ramp up because as that CPU is running, it's gonna heat up and trip the thermostat on the autonomous fan controller. When it hits 89 degrees, you're going to hear that fan start up. But yeah, so I'm very happy. We don't have to have that in there anymore to make it work. We have the Stratus card supplying all the power now. And I'm just waiting for that uh, autonomous fan controller to kick on. 
Now it's quite cool out here in the garage, so it'll take a few more minutes for it to kick on. And it looks like that fan's spinning really slowly, but it isn't. It's just the frame rate on the camera. And you can see the 3.3 volt, 5 volt, and 12 volt section of the board. And we put another header pin on it to supply the 12 volt. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that connector off that I put on the other side of that. Take that and remove that. We'll just let this run for a minute or two. And then you're going to hear that fan ramp up. Okay, so we got it all back together. And we're going to power it up and see how it works. Now that we're going to be using the Stratos High Power VRM board. So, let's try it. Let me plug it in. And we should... Nice. You can only get the bong with the Apple speakers that were made for this. And you can see our screen is getting video. We're booting into Sorabe Leopard. And we're booting up there. And you can see our logo here is all lit up here, our Apple logo. See it a little better there. And since we get it all back together, it takes a, a little bit longer for it to figure out what's going on here. I can hardly wait. I'm so excited. I've been trying to get this thing to work for a long time. And there we are, we're booting in the Sorbet Leopard. Got our mouse cursor. And the desktop's loading up. Now I'm not hooked up to the internet because I have to hook the ethernet up to it here. This doesn't have the Airport Extreme card in it. This has the older style Airport card. But yeah, we're working. Nice. See the docks all nice and smooth here. But I am so glad that we got this working. And you can see about this Mac, we're running at 2.1 gigahertz Power PCG4. We have 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, and we are running on Sorbet Leopard. 10.5.9 Well, I'm so excited that I got this working. I am so happy. I got the Stratus board working in it. I've been waiting to do that for a long time. So there you have it. This is my Marchintosh contribution. And if you like more stuff like that, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. You can reach out to me on Twitter, Mastodon, and MeWe. And just like these things, it always goes on my Patreon first. So if you want to be a Patreon member, please be a member. You get to see things that you don't normally see. But whenever I do a video, it always goes on Patreon first. Members get the first look at it. So until next time, everybody, have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.